All right, so we're going to do uh, episode two of our physics questions and answers videos. Uh, again, we just going through a couple of questions and we will just answer them one at a time. And hopefully you can see my method of answering questions and how I remove the answers that don't make sense and come up with the answer that maybe does. A lot of times you may not know the answer right off the bat. So you can kind of deduce, get an educated guess on which one may be correct. Or at least you can come up to one or two of the answers that are close to each other and, you know, and find out, maybe come to the point where you have a 50-50 shot at it. Generally, you can get rid of one of the answers that just makes no sense. But a lot of times there will be two that are really good. And so you kind of have to really think through each of those answers to find which one is more correct. So let's, let's just go through a few questions here and we'll see what comes up. So our first question is, which artifact is not related to the unexpected reflection of an acoustic wave? So remember, we have to find our keywords here. So artifact, we're looking for an artifact. And we want something that's not related. This is the, probably the biggest one. If you read through these quickly, a lot of times you, you might jump over that not and just think, hey, which artifact's related? And then you're going to end up with the wrong answer. So which artifact is not related? And then we're looking for an unexpected reflection. So an artifact that's not related to an unexpected reflection. So let's look at a couple of these here. Um, we'll just kind of walk through them. And I know maybe this is one that you just know the answer right off the bat, but let's just go through each of them and kind of see where we end up. So multipath, let's go talk about that real quick. So for multipath, we know that we're scanning, you know, let's say this is a this is a belly here and we have we have a liver. This is a belly here, and we have a, you know, we're looking at a liver back in here. Got a big diaphragm over here. So multipath, and we've talked about this in videos before. Our, our our beam comes out of the transducer, and it hits a reflector, and rather than coming straight back, it shoots off at an angle, and then it hits a reflector that it does like and it shoots back to the transducer. Well, the path it expected was, was this one here and to return. So that's how much time it expects it to take to place a, you know, a dot on your image here in your liver. But what it actually got was this whole path here, which takes a lot longer. So it'll place that dot deeper in the, in the image. So we know it's not multipath because that is related to an unexpected reflection. Uh, let's check out comet tail here. Is let's say right, we have a you know a calcified wall here, and I'm gonna I'm gonna blow this up just make it a little more exaggerated. The sound comes in here, and it hits that calcified wall, and it comes back, and it it hits the other calcified wall. I'm gonna I'm gonna make a a big version of this. The sound comes in and it hits the calcified wall and it bounces up and it hits this wall. Comes back, hits this wall, and then let's say it finally escapes. So it finally escapes and comes back. We see our gallbladder and we see this, you know, bright spot on the wall with these echoes that kind of just follow and peter out like that. What's happening is each time it bounces, it takes a little longer to get back to the probe. So there's going to be a gap between each echo and the signals going, will get weaker and weaker. So you, it peters out. So then you end up with that, that comet tail shape. Now we know it's not this one and this one. Those are both unexpected reflections. Reverb is basically the same thing as comet tail, just a bigger version of it. You know, it's bouncing between the bladder wall or the actual outside walls of the gallbladder. So again, that's the same thing. So if these two are the same, and this one is, is an unexpected reflection, it has to be our last one. We don't even have to know what lateral resolution is. I mean, of course you do, but for this question, you just have to know that those first three aren't correct. And here's one good tip to know. If you have two answers that mean the same thing, 
and the question is asking for one answer, then those are wrong, both of them. So out of these questions, we know that the answer is lateral resolution because we eliminated the other three. All right, let's go on to our next question. So let's find our keywords here. Unexpected, low attenuation. So that results in which of the artifacts? We're looking for an artifact that has to do with low attenuation. So let's just think what would low attenuation be? This is another one of those questions that if you if you read it quickly, you can answer it incorrectly because you're thinking, oh, low attenuation, and maybe you're thinking it's going to be shadowing where it may not be, or you know, you're going to think the opposite. So we're looking. If we had high attenuation, that's what we end up with this because there's lots of attenuation. We're looking for no attenuation or low attenuation. So we already talked about refraction. Refraction is the beam going off to some other place. So that's causing attenuation. So with the beam going off somewhere we don't want, that's going to be attenuation. And then B is just attenuation. Well, attenuation is attenuation, so we can't be there. What we're left with is these two. And one of them has to do with low attenuation, one that has to do with high attenuation. So let's let's just look at these two, these two answers real quick. So let's say we have a structure that is mm, calcified. Let's no. And we have a structure that is cystic. So if the beam hits this guy. Because of the difference in properties in the tissue of whatever this is sitting in versus the hardness of the calcified mass, we will get a lot of reflection. So most of this beam is coming back. Therefore, there's nothing left to image back in this area. This other mass our beam comes and there's nothing to reflect there's no difference it just it just sees this as nothing and what happens is because this is fluid inside the the cystic mass the beam travels faster it shoots through there really fast and let's say it reflects right right posterior to it and comes back we're getting I'll exaggerate, let's say 100% of this sound back. But that information is coming from back here. This one, we're also getting 100% of our sound, but it's all coming from the mass. And we have 0% back. This one, we're basically getting 0% of the mass because it, it didn't stop it. So which one's attenuating more? Which one's removing the signal? The mass is removing, there's no sound back through here in any of this area. The mass removed the whole signal. This one, all of the signal came through to image back. So what we end up seeing is our, our calcified mass here will have a shadow. Our cystic mass will enhance. So because there was no attenuation through that mass, we end up with more information back here. There was 100% attenuation. Our beam didn't make it through, so it attenuated to basically 100%. We get no information. So when we look at our question, unexpected low attenuation, 
low attenuation, like our cyst, no attenuation, gives us what? It gives us enhancement. I know this sounds simple, but I beat this in because this is a question that a lot of people will get wrong because it's so easy. You just think, oh, I know this one. And then you answer it without really going through, you know, the steps to figure out what it is. And I know it's easy to think, oh, low attenuation. You're thinking nothing happened, you know, or you think, hey, the, cyst, the, the calcified structure sent the whole beam back. Therefore, there was nothing attenuated. We got all the information back. But none of the beam made it through to image any other part of the, the you know, the, the organ, where the cyst didn't send any of the beam back. So nothing attenuated there. All right, hope that makes sense. So what is Comet Tail's artifacts fundamental mechanism of formation? So what are we looking for? We're looking for, we're looking for a Comet Tail artifact, the, the, basically the method of formation. How does it form? So we, you know, we talked about this a second ago. What do we think it could be? This is why I always say, if you don't know an answer, to flag it and then to move on. Because a lot of times a prior question will answer a later uh, question. So like our answer from the first question is actually giving us the answer for this one. Because we thought through what Comet Tail Artifact does. And so... Right off the bat, we kind of know the answer, but let's look at a few of these. So rarefaction, that has to do with the property of the wave. With rarefaction, I don't, if you remember, you have the wave um, basically kind of acts like particles. And so... It kind of squishes, and then it, it's kind of like a slinky. Like, if you bounce it, some parts are going to be squished together, and then some parts are going to be stretched apart. And so, you know, we, we have our compression right here, because everything's compressing. And then we have our rare faction, where everything's... I just think of it like rare. There, it's, it's not common, so it's, I just think of it as rare helps me to remember that that's the part where the wave is like further apart from each other. That has nothing to do with comet tail artifacts. So, so we know it's not that one. Could be reflection. Refraction. So with refraction, basically if we're imaging our, our organ down here, and let's say, let's say there's another structure up here that's vastly different. If our beam is coming in here, and it has to come in, it can't, if it's coming straight down, it's just going to go straight through, you know, and send little waves back. It doesn't matter if it's coming straight. But if it's coming off at an angle, and let's act like our curve is shooting off at an angle here, when it hits this interface down here, it might bend a little bit. And I have a whole video on refraction. If you need to understand that, it is in one of our other modules. So refraction is just going to be this bending from two uh, interfaces that are have different sound properties. And redirection. So with redirection, again, let's say, let's say this is our, our liver and our diaphragm. Our sound beam comes here, and it runs off this away, and we never hear from it again. There won't be any... Thing on our image to show where that wave went because it's gone in the body. So we know it's not this one. We know it's not that one, and we know it's not that one. The thing with redirection, you know, we have if we have our gallbladder here, and the signal comes in here, and it shoots off this way, it's redirected. the The transducer never knows where it's at because it's gone. So we don't have a dot to correspond with that wave. So that's why our, our image doesn't have all the information. This is just attenuation that because the beam's not as strong coming back because it lost a piece. So it doesn't even matter if we have that calcified wall here. Even if this comes in and shoots off, well, it's gone. 
it's not going to create any any echoes like a comment channel because it's gone. So again, we know it's not that. We know it's not that. We know it's not that. So our answer has to be here. All right. So let's look at this question. Television monitors produce blank images per second. This is one of those ones you just have to know the number. And this has to do with frame rate, so it's pretty important. I like to think of it like if you're watching a movie that's made on film, it has 24 frames a second. And you see a flicker. You know, the, the, the image kind of flickers. Think of the old-timey movies, you know, where it kind of flickers. You know, they use 24 or less frames. So I always tell myself, if I have a, an image where I can't see any flickering, it's got to be more than that. So to me, right off the bat, I just think anything, you know, it's got to be more than 24. It's kind of a higher number. So we know it's not 10. 10 would be if you've ever been imaging really deep in the body and you have four focal zones on. Basically, everything you can do to shut up, you know, to make your frame rate really bad. And the image is just jittery. Like as you move, it takes a second and it kind of it jumps around. It's really low. So to me, like it cannot be 10, it has to be higher. Than the other thing I think about is, let's look at an old TV real quick. And we're moving to, to LCDs, so they don't, they don't tend to do this, you know, as much as. So talking about our old TVs and basically you have your, your electricity in your socket here and it would pulse at 30 hertz. So 30 times a second, the electricity would pulse. And that's the re reason they chose 30 frames a second. It was an easy standard to get to because they had a very reliable um, measurement on the electricity. So basically the way the TV would work is it would draw these lines like this. And it would do that 30 times a second, but then it would also do this. It would do the in-between lines 30 times a second. So you'd get 60 half frames, but you'd get 30 complete frames. Per second. So whenever the question asks, they're looking for 30 frames per second. LCD screens don't do this. And a lot of times they can go very high, 60. They're going to be multiples of 30 generally. So it's going to be 30, 60, 120, 240. And it kind of just runs up. But the old monitors were 30 frames a second. This question is still asked, but not as much as it used to. I'm going to include it here because it is still being asked. So the main thing is this 30 frames per second. They will throw in this 60 because it's creating 60 half frames, but then they splice them together and make 30 complete frames. All right, hope that helps. If you have any questions, send them my way. If um, you have a question in one of your books that you get stuck on, also send that my way and I'll include it in a later video. Take care.